strongly against the killing of Tswane University of Technology student Katlejo Monareng, allegedly at the hands of police. The Center for the Study of Violence and Reconciliation, however, says there's little chance that officers found guilty will account for the death of Monareng. Speaking to Sakina on the show yesterday, Dr. Hugo van Amerva said police still lack proper leadership engagement on how to deal with protests. To respond to this, in our Seapoint studios, we have the Deputy Police Minister, Bongani Mkongi in uh, in Seapoint, as I say. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Good to have you on the program. Thank you very much, Anne, and uh, good morning to all the viewers. Thank you very much, Minister. I, uh, Deputy Minister, I want to first, before we get on to the, the topic of the TUT student and the tragic death there, let's just talk <coughs> about what happened yesterday uh, with regard to the looting in Soweto. Police now coming out saying three people have been killed and also, and I think I'll get straight into it and ask you, the police were apparently tipped off about this, that, uh, that there may be looting, that there has been threats against these spaza shops before, and now nothing was done about it. They were just looking into it and examining the verity or the, to verify these reports, and yet we've got three people dead. How do you respond to this? Thank you very much, Leanne. I think it's not true that the police didn't respond when they had the information that they will be looting and so forth. I still remember that I've discussed the matter with the provincial commissioner of police in Gauteng about the possibility of the looting and that we need to deploy police. So the provincial commissioner deployed the police but the number was not enough because the looting was sporadic. You know, it's go to one spaza shop to another. So the question was the strategy of deployment. Mm. Well, it, it clearly was not good enough, um, Deputy Minister, with all due respect, if we look at yes. what, what actually happened yesterday. Surely your intelligence should be um, better than that. And also, in terms of protecting shop owners, I understand what was at the root of it, but certainly having people killed due to this is not, uh, uh, that's not acceptable. Yes, no, we understand that particular weakness, um, uh, Leanne, and we also admitted as police uh, leadership that we have problems with our intelligence and therefore we need a serious turnaround um, program for them. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are trying to do as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, well... Uh Deputy Minister, let's, let's, let's move on to the situation in, in Sashenguven now because the situation has uh, been very, very difficult and we, we need to ask you if you've been able to establish why police officers who attended the situation at TUT Sashenguven campus were carrying R5 li rifles and used live ammunition on students. Talk to us about this. Thank you very much about that particular question. You will remember that... Uh, since the matter took place on Friday, I received a call from the student leadership of that institution about the sudden murder of Kachler. I immediately called my team to make sure that they organized a stakeholder meeting of all stakeholders of that institution on Monday. So the whole weekend they were busy gathering that particular meeting and then we managed to hold the meeting on Monday. I condemned with strong terms the matter of police carrying machine guns like R5s in an institution of higher learning. It is undemocratic and then it is not supposed to be part and parcel of the new and open society. Because students are not going to these institutions carrying guns. They are going in these institutions carrying pens, carrying iPads, and then carrying some computers. So I don't understand when there's a peaceful protest, why police will deploy people with R5s and dogs to students. So I condemned that. Uh, um, Minister, that Deputy Minister, I, I, I... And I we processed the matter with the IPED. Okay, I understand. IPED that if is I may busy you. now investigating the matter thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, okay. We received post-mortem results, and then we found that it was really an R5 and we are processing those police officers. Wow. On Friday, which is tomorrow, um, uh, Mr. McBride is supposed to be presenting that report because I want to compare that report with the report that the police have presented to me 
on Monday. Okay, and Deputy then Minister, make a statement about I have what to, will be the way I have to interrupt you in here terms and ask of you. Deputy officers. Minister, I'm not sure if you can because hear us. Because you must us. understand that we don't know which gun that bullet came. And Dep those police officers were two. Okay. So we need to get that right first and yeah. then make sure that we are getting a right person. All right, Deputy Minister, I'm not sure if you are, are you still, can you still hear us in Johannesburg? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. I just wanted to interrupt you while you were talking, just to ask you, you are saying that you don't understand how they could be carrying R5 rifles. You condemn it in the strongest possible terms, and you don't know where they got the order to do that, and you are the deputy police minister. I, I don't understand, and I'm sure our viewers don't understand either, how you're not aware of this. I mean, surely there's a policy that police do not carry R5 rifles onto a campus uh, for innocent protesting students that are just demanding whatever it is that their demands were at the time. Surely there's a blanket rule that this is not allowed. Uh, Leanne, I didn't say I didn't know who deployed them because the first person that is accountable for those police officers is the station commander that I had a meeting with them, with the provincial commissioner on Monday. So they have processed, they processed the report, they gave me the report why they deployed those people, and then they told me that the public order policing were not there at that particular time. That is not an excuse, because if a protest is beginning, you're supposed to deploy public order policing, mm. not general police that are going to carry heavy arms. So I took responsibility about this particular matter, and that is why the provincial commissioner and the station commander, they are accountable for this matter. And is he still in the position? Has he been suspended? Will he be, uh, will he be fired for this, the station commander? No, we'll have harsh, harsh sentences for these people, but it is very important that we get recommendations from the IP. Because we can't, as ministers, investigate police, whereas we have a constitutional body that has a responsibility to do that. So IP is processing the matter, and they are going to give me that report tomorrow. So from your understanding, and I know that you're saying you're getting a report, but can it be confirmed that the station commander gave the order to use live ammunition on the protesting students? Yes, I mean, the police cannot just go and intervene without an order. So that order was received from the station commander. Now, this is exceptionally worrying, especially, Deputy Minister, when we're living in a country where we're still trying to get over an incident like the Marikana massacre, where innocent, and I do say innocent lives, because it was revealed that at no stage did they carry weapons and that police officers were shooting, studies have found were shooting uh, at these, these unarmed miners when it was actually their colleagues on the other side of the mountain that were shooting, and they had thought that it was the miners, but they were unarmed. Now, once again, a life has been lost because police officers clearly do not know how to handle protesters. In a country like South Africa, where there's a protest every other day, you'd think they'd be trained better. So, at the end of the day, it may be the station commander, but let's look to the top levels of what's going on at the department and the training of police officers to handle these situations. No, thank you very much for that question. Fortunately, I came here with the report that have been tabled by the international experts, where the recommendation by the Falam Commission that there should be the investigation about those particular things and then have an alternative policing in South Africa. Fortunately, I came with this report. This is a Marikana report. Okay. It is the panel of experts on policing and crowd management. Correct. Established by the Minister of Police in terms of the recommendations of the Marikana Commission. I finished this job. And then I tabled this on the desk of the Minister. And the responsibility of the Minister now is to process this report to Cabinet. Cabinet adopted and therefore the nation to discuss it. There are many recommendations, demilitarization of police, professionalization of police, crowd management, and other related matters of protest management. So we have a report now. There will be no excuses of police 
because it's giving us direction about the, the proper training of a democratic policing mm. in the Republic of South Africa. Mm. Mm. So generally, Leanne, we agree that we had uh, uh, a, a bad policing in South Africa. We are transforming, we are transforming it now. And this is a report that we need to table to cabinet and the nation. Yeah. Well, it's something that I imagine most South Africans want it to be enforced speedily. And it's a big report. These recommendations were made years ago. And it's something that's still sitting there and something that's still happening. And we're discussing yet another death at the hands of our police officers. So, Deputy Minister, what I need to also find out for you, what role do police actually play at these institutions of higher learning? Why are they there in the first place? Why are there security guards at these campuses? And uh, what are their duties? I mean, maybe you can explain it to us, because surely police should not be there. You know, this, the question of policing in the Republic of South Africa, even internationally, is complex. Because police do not just enter in any institution of higher learning, they are called. It's either they are called by students or they are called by the management. For an example, if a student is raped, in that institution. That student report at the police station, the police take a case and go investigate the case inside of the university. And when there are protests, the campus control system or campus protection system in these campuses has collapsed and they cannot control the protests of students and then they call the police so the police do not impose themselves into institutions of higher learning. Stakeholders okay. in those institutions, because they cannot manage their conflicts, they call the intervention of the police. So we must explain the police do not invite themselves into these institutions yeah, of higher yeah. learning. And you, and you do agree, and I'm gathering from your response, that police actually do not belong on university campuses. I mean, we've got students that are are demanding their freedom. Uh, they've been sentenced for various crimes. I'm not going to let you comment on the sentencing uh, from the Fees Must Fall campaigns, but we saw them also having to react to police brutality, and it was a very, very dire situation. They now, some are spending time in jail for crimes that they did commit, but le let's just look at it going forward. Um, this should not be the police's mandate to go in and control university students. And I imagine you agree with that. And, and, and from now on, surely it's something that you will, you'll look into at the hands of police and station commanders that at all costs, they should not be on those campuses. Yes, Leanne, I'm also responsible. The president gave me a task of dealing with campus safety and school safety. And I'm addressing all the stakeholders in many universities since I've started last year. The matter that is a challenge in this institution is the collapse of the campus protection services. These institutions, they hire security companies paying millions than expanding and training the campus protection system, which can be able to understand their relationship with the students. We were students before we were deputy ministers. Mm -hmm. We had strong campus protection services that had relations with the management and relations with the student board in terms of the SRC. But today, institutions, they have five, 10 campus protection services. Therefore, they don't have the capacity in terms of um, managing crowds and protests in those institutions. So I propose to principals of institutions that let's go back to a strong campus protection service, and also to a concrete judicial system at universities. Because when these young people are in conflict with the law in these institutions, they are not processed properly because there's a collapse of a judicial system. So these are the tasks that we are doing now as police, and we are prepared to support in terms of the recommendations of, of the panel of experts to train more campus protection services and also to employ more of those in those particular campuses. So that is a complex challenge that we have yeah. in these institutions of higher learning. Deputy Minister, my final question to you is, and I, again I go back to the plight of those students that uh, have been found guilty by a court of law, some even serving six years yeah. in, 
in prison for their role in the Fees Must Fall protests and what they did. I want to ask you, is there a single police officer who's been held accountable for the violence that they have inflicted on the protesting students? I know you're still examining the report for the TUT incident, but from your knowledge, is there a single police officer that's been held accountable for any killing of a protester as we sit here? Yes, there's only one case that was reported of killing. It was in uh, Soshanguve. And uh, the students who were protesting yesterday, who marched to the offices of the police, they said we must reopen that particular case. I agreed with them that we're going to reopen that particular case and make sure that we put that police to book. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, I agreed that the Minister of Justice, Masuta, is going to assist the students to write appeals to the president. But I'm asking a question. What do you do with students during the fees must fall? Who took two security guards, handcuffed them, put them or locked them in a room, banned the room, and those security guards, they were banned to death? What do you do about it? Yeah, yeah. Minister, I... Do I, we I, say we must pardon those people and send a message that we can continue banning people down in institutions of higher learning mm. and then you can apply for pardon to the president? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think anybody would expect that of the justice system. Thank but you very much. One thing, one thing that I think people do expect of the justice system is what's good for one should be good for the other. And that as you sit here and you and I have this conversation. My question to you was, has there been a single police officer convicted for any of these atrocities against the protesters? And your answer to me simply is no, there isn't. And I think accountability must be held because police officers will continue to do this if there is no accountability and proper training in place. So, um, Deputy Minister, we have to leave it there, but I thank you for your honesty, I thank, thank you for your time, and uh, I do hope that this is a, a speedy resolution to a conversation that will continue unless something is done about it. Uh, students being killed, innocent people being killed at the hands of police officers who clearly do not have the correct training, and there is no one being held accountable for carrying live ammunition onto a campus, and dogs as well that are there to control violent protests and armed protesters, and none of these students are armed as we know. All right, let's leave it there. We take a break, we'll see you after this. Do stay tuned.